So in my line of business, you have to deal with a lot of crap. And so in today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you guys how I deal with all the crap here on the farm and how I don't let it overwhelm me. Morning, Mr. Toby Dog. How's it going, buddy? Uh, good to see you. Good to see you, puppy dog. You're dirty today, pal. What have you been lying in? Why's your took us all filthy, huh? What's going on? I'll have to brush you out. Come on, let's go. It's a cold one this morning. It's only two degrees Fahrenheit and whatever it is Celsius. Oh, my hydrant works. There we go. So yeah, here on our farm we have, I don't know, about 40 geese, about a little less than 30 ducks, a little less than 30 chickens, four cows and a steer. We've got three outdoor barn cats. We've got one indoor barn cat. These cats make a lot of poop. <laughs> and then of course we have one adorable livestock guardian dog. Hey Tobes, how's it going buddy? Oh, group hug. Hey. Ginny, be nice. And in case you guys are really wondering, this video is about how to deal with the poop from my animals here on the farm, not necessarily how to deal with other crap that might appear in your life. But I actually think that there might be some other strategies that will help you deal with some of that other stuff if you apply the metaphor properly. Good morning, weird chickens. Hey, Rosie. How's it going there, sweetie? Ginny from above. <laughs> Rosie's like, I'm not sure what to make of that. Rosie, were you the only silky brave enough to come outside? <laughs> we'll also admit dealing with animal crap in the cold days is even harder. I think she lays her eggs inside here because I keep finding one lone chicken egg inside the duck house. Release the quacken! How are you guys doing this morning? Everybody seems kind of frosty and cold. What's the weather report, Jemima Puddle Duck? <laughs> Any feedback? Oop, there goes Rosie, she just snuck in. A couple of my other chickens keep sneaking into the duck house too. And I really don't blame them because the duck house is actually kind of nice. Did you just lay an egg, Rose? Wow, that was quick. So yeah, this area here is our duck house. It houses all of our ducks and a couple of chickens that will occasionally crash inside the duck house. And because I lock the animals up at night, they all go in there and they will poop everywhere inside of there. And so what you'll notice here is a deep layer of bedding. It's on top of a floor that's actually covered in linoleum. I built this house specifically with ducks in mind. And there's really no nice way to say this, but ducks make really wet poops. And because they have those wet poops, poop management's important. So I actually built this trap door and so when I want to clean the duck house out, I just basically push all the compost and waste outside of here and let it pile up. And so I'll make just a big mountain of compost poop right here, let it sit for a couple of months and age. And then when it's done aging, I'll bring it out to the garden and use it to fertilize Allison's plants. Duck poop is great for fertilizing a garden, but since it's so high in nitrogen, much like chicken poop, you need to let it age just a little bit. You don't want to put it directly on your garden. It can definitely burn your plants. Since it's such a cold day, I need to bring water to the chickens and geese. Good morning, everybody. How's it going? How's everybody doing? What's going on, chickens? Fresh water. Hang on, let me hit you with some feet. You know, I thought the geese would be the more dominant animal here in this house. It seems like the chickens have really taken it over. What's going on, geese? I gotta say, it feels so much warmer in here. Whew. Because of like all the ventilation I have, I know it can't be that much warmer, but it's easily 10, 15 degrees warmer inside here than it is outside. I think between all the bodies that I have moving around, plus the solar power of trapping the heat inside the plastic, 
These hoop coops are just staying so nice and toasty. Doesn't look like I have any eggs yet this morning, but I bet if I come back in a couple of hours, there'll be about three or four in there. I've even started putting a dust bath, of just like our old fire ash right in here as well. The dust bath is actually really important for the hygiene with your uh, chickens, especially. Unlike the ducks and the geese, the chickens don't go into water to wash themselves. What they like to do is like take a bath in a bunch of dirt and the, the scrubbing of the dirt is actually how they get themselves clean. Well, you can see that girl right here. She was just in there. You can see she's got ash on her back. <laughs> you can use just like regular like dirt and that's typically what a chicken would use in nature. This time of year because it's, the dirt's all frozen, I find that the wood ash works great because we have a lot of wood ash because we have a wood burning stove, sort of a win-win. The wood ash actually adds, I think, phosphorus so it helps balance out the compost that we make in here. Now, in terms of the bedding, I use a mix of wood chips, wood flakes, straw. Basically what I'll do is I'll come in here a couple of times a week and just spread some fresh material, which if I'm being true to my schedule right now, I'm probably due for right now. All right, we got a fresh bale of straw here for the animals. So now what I'll typically do is, some days I'll put it on this side of the hoop house, and then other days I'll put it on that side of the hoop house. And I'll just pick it up and spread it around. And the chickens are really good at helping out and spreading it around as well. Always make sure you grab the twine though, because you don't want, the geese especially can actually choke on this. So you gotta be careful for the baling twine. Well, I'll just kick it around, the chickens will kick it around. I find that one bale does half the hoop house. Like tomorrow or the next day I'll do a second bale. And that will do the other half of the hoop house. And as long as I keep having that much freshness, I have not had issues so far. It smells really nice in here. Like it's got a nice sort of earthy aroma. You can see here, this is actually pressure bedding down on this end. So I probably don't have to put anything down for at least another couple of days. Like there's no nitrogen buildup at all because of the birds. You know, I make sure to ventilate it at both ends. So there is a way to get fresh air in here and it's not just stale. But for the most part, it's coming from the fact that the bedding just keeps getting piled up and composting down below. At the rate I'm going, I expect to have probably a foot or two of bedding built up in here by the springtime and what I'll do is I'll just come in here with the tractor and scoop it all up and set it aside so that it can compost more and then use it in the garden for future years or maybe go use it to fertilize our trees in the future as well. Buck the rooster is doing really well. He uh, is settled in well to his flock and seems like he's not having any issues. A lot of folks have commented that he doesn't quite look like a Rhode Island red rooster and I think that's kind of true. You know a few folks in the comments have actually posited that he might be like a golden laced Wyandot or something along those lines and I think he might be or maybe some sort of half breed. He's definitely not a normal Rhode Island Red Rooster though that's for sure because if you compare him to General Washington our previous Rhode Island Red Rooster they look very different. Especially on these cold days, the birds really do like the thicker material. It helps them nest in and stay warm. You can see this gal here cozying up into it. You know, when the temps drop to single digit or even negative temperatures, I worry most about our chickens. Our ducks, our geese, our cattle, they're all equipped really well for dealing with the extreme colds. It's the chickens that I find actually have the most trouble. Since today is adding straw day, I figure I'll add some straw for the ducks too. I find I only need to add straw in here maybe once a week. Oh wow, she's, I don't know if you saw that on camera. Rosie just got up and shot off of her nest. She's now going down the ramp. And you can see, well, there's actually two eggs down here. One of them is super fresh, the other one is fairly fresh. And ooh, Toby Dog's looking at him like, ooh, maybe I could get one of those. I don't know, buddy, they might end up being my breakfast this morning. We'll also get a tremendous amount of fertilizer and compost from this stuff as well. Ooh, Toby's checking it out. You like it in here, bud, huh? Well, here, I do have a surprise for you. Hang on. Throw some fresh straw down for Toby's bedding as well. Because it's getting so cold tonight, I wanna make sure he has plenty of bedding to stay warm. Now, someone might ask, why don't I just bring him inside? 
but actually he'd be really unhappy if I brought him inside. This pup right here, he is built for the cold weather and he really doesn't like to be indoors. He likes having the freedom to roam and be around the farm and do his thing. And the other funny thing is I've actually never potty trained him. He has always just used the pasture as his backyard bathroom. He'll, you know, go all over the place. It's not like it's littered in dog poop, but there's definitely dog poop out there. It actually makes it all rather low maintenance. I bet you if I brought him in the house for a night, he wouldn't poop right where he was or pee. He's pretty hygienic. I've noticed that he never goes to the bathroom around the duck and goose and chicken area. He always goes to the bathroom out in the pasture. I think dogs have good instincts when it comes to that. So yeah, if I did lock him inside, I bet he would be very unhappy, but he probably wouldn't go to the bathroom inside. I will probably bring the barn cats in tonight. When we get into the negative temps at night, I usually bring them inside and put them in the basement. I set like a litter box down there. While we're on the crap conversation today for a cat's litter, what I end up using is actually these like pelletized pine bedding that you can buy at like your farm supply stores. It's really cheap, it works really good. I like the smell better than cat litter. There's no odor to it. It's just kind of a nice little pine scent to it. It's super absorbent for the urine. It, it does a good job with, you know, containing the poops. And it's also much more biodegradable. And so what I'll do is just keep a fresh litter box for both Lil Barn Cat, our indoor cat, as well as the three that are downstairs. When the barn cats are outside, they go wherever they want. Pablo is a really stealthy pooper. Like, I don't think I've ever seen him going to the bathroom. Ginny Barn Cat has no shame and she goes pretty much wherever she likes. It's kind of actually funny. Like, she doesn't go in the barn, but she will go, like, in the cattle area. She'll go all over the place. The big thing we do is try to keep them from going to the bathroom in our garden. The waste matter from cats can actually be very toxic to humans, so you gotta be very careful about where they go and making sure they don't contaminate you. Hey, what's going on there, Ninja Cat? How you doing, sweetie? I don't think you're liking this cold nearly as much as Toby Dog's liking this cold. I'll be back to feed you in a couple minutes, bud. Now, because it's so cold, I gotta wait for the glow plug to start up before I try to start up the tractor. There we go. I'll just give that a minute to warm up. Now, for those of you who are wondering where our human waste goes, since we live out in the country, we actually have a septic system. And so when my wife Allison and I go to the bathroom, that's where all our waste product goes. I could do a whole video on the science of a good septic system, but I won't bore you guys with that topic today. As the cow poop goes, I have a whole separate system. So in the spring, summer, and fall months, I'll have the cattle on pasture. And what I'll do is I'll basically rotationally graze them and I will move them to fresh pasture every single day, letting them deposit their manure directly onto the pasture. That activity helps ensure that their manure doesn't build up in any one spot and is evenly spread and helps fertilize the pasture, making it grow even more grass to feed even more cattle. But in the winter months, I've got them in a relatively small area. You know, they have about a half an acre paddock that's available to them. Surprisingly, this whole space, when you loop it around and cut back around, it measures out to a half an acre. And so I don't have the luxury of rotating them. What I end up doing instead is a couple of things. Number one, I'll come around with my wheelbarrow and shovel and scoop up manure when I can. I'll usually do that a couple times a week. This time of year, everything is frozen solid. So it's really easy to pick up and not gross to move at all. The other thing I do is much like with my geese and ducks and chickens, I'll do sort of a deep litter bedding method. And so I will alternate where I put their hay. And sometimes I will put it on the ground. Sometimes I'll put it in that cradle. But what always seems to happen is hay ends up getting spread on the ground. And so I just let that pile up and build up. And so the hay acts as Joel Salatin would call it, a carbonaceous diaper and it basically soaks up the manure and mixing the hay with the manure, you've got carbon mixing with nitrogen, which ultimately breaks down and makes some pretty darn good fertilizer and compost. So it's a combination of moving the cattle around coupled with removing as much of the manure as I can. It's probably not perfect. And as I think about what I wanna do on the farm for next winter, I'm starting to get some ideas on how to better manage things. But overall, it's keeping these guys pretty healthy. Hey, Ann, can I pet you? Anna Green Gables is like, no, you can't pet me. She's also like, you should probably fill in that hay cradle now, which is actually why I just fired up the tractor. 
And yeah, by the way, when the summer months hit, I'll probably come in here with the tractor and clear out all this and reseed it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this as a winter area for next year. So just wanna keep it clean and tidy and looking good. And my giant wheelbarrow of poop will ultimately get used as fertilizer. Probably not for the garden because I'm using hay as a lot of the bedding, uh, but probably put it out on the pasture with the trees. You know, last year I spent about $1,500 on a hay bale grabber, this like special hydraulic device to pick up hay bales. And while it was really handy when I had to unload the truck when all of our hay arrived back in the fall, I'm finding it was a complete waste of money this time of year. Using my pallet forks, or I probably could have gotten like a $300 bale spear, just so simple and easy. I don't even know why I wasted the money on that bell grabber. Just goes to show you, sometimes you're better off just making do with what you got in your early days and then spending more money as you get further along and know better what you want around your farm. And then the broth, shake it like a Polaroid picture. And now it's time to serve my buddy. Get out of here, Pablo. Come on, out you go. Enjoy, buddy. I hope you guys have enjoyed this 15 minute lecture on animal poop. It's always been a dream of mine to make a video like this. Now, before I close out this video, I did want to put in a quick plug for some brand new merchandise we have in our merch store. Specifically, we have a new Pablo, Toby, and Ron Swanson design. The new design is available in a t-shirt, also in a kid's t-shirt, as well as a tumbler and a sticker. It's only going to be available for a limited time, so either look down below or look on our Teespring store, or you can even look at goldshawfarm.com. Check it out, and thank you to all of you for the support that you've given us over these past few weeks. It's absolutely humbling and I appreciate it so much.